consumers and delivery drivers that use the DoorDash app apps should send a very clear message to DoorDash. I suggest hashtag delete DoorDash. Delete your app. Delete your consumer app. Delete your driver app. And here's why. we got to stand for something. If you are tipping your driver, being generous, kindness of your heart, you're giving them a $5, $10 tip, and that is going to CEO Tony Zhu's bank account at DoorDash and not to the driver. you got to say to yourself, hasn't DoorDash lost your trust, right? That tip was intended for the driver. The company kept it. On the other hand, you dear driver, DoorDasher, hashtag delete DoorDash, disengage from the app, move on to another company, maybe Postmates, Grubhub, or Uber Eats. Someone that doesn't steal your tips. we got to stand for something. Ladies and gentlemen, if you keep on driving for a company that is stealing your tips, and then they got caught, right, and then they settled for $2.5 million on this tipping lawsuit, and they lick their wounds, consumers need to be aware of how the companies treat employees, treat the drivers, right? You shouldn't be okay with this, right? You should hand in those divorce papers, delete the app. You have plenty of other legit legal companies that want to do ethical business, right? DoorDash is not ethical. Stealing two and a half million dollars of tips that the consumer intended for the driver is shameful. It's shameful. So I say to Tony Zhu, you got caught with your pants down running around in San Francisco, right? You got busted, dude. You settled for two and a half million dollars because you know you were wrong. And DoorDashes, whether you're using the app or whether you're delivering on the app, you got to call it a day. We cannot stand for beer. We have to send them a loud and clear message that this shit doesn't fly in 2020, right? You have many other good choices out there that want to do legit business. Not the slim, shady, DoorDash, Tony Zoo business. So I ask you to start spreading the word. Hashtag delete DoorDash. Let's go into the story. When times are good, the first thing I splurge on is food. Great article by this um, writer. His name is Sean Kernan. I'll leave you the link to his great article. I'll never own a $70,000 car, but I'll gladly overpay three times for a meal, particularly if it means I don't have to leave the house. Years ago, I humble bragged on Facebook that pizza men love me because I'm a good tipper. Thank you. We enjoy good tippers that know that we're worthy, that we are doing our job correctly. This predictably invited a wave of gay jokes, but my original sentiment was the same. Tipping is good karma. Indeed it is. For years, I was using DoorDash until I found out my tips weren't being distributed properly. It was infuriating to the point that I stopped using them, but I wasn't alone. The expanding gig economy has brought an avalanche of workers' rights issues to our doorsteps. And despite any wishy-washy platitudes that CEOs tweet and twat about, workers remain in jeopardy in new evolving ways. What did DoorDash do wrong exactly? Let's say you ordered a dinner delivered from a local restaurant. The food comes and you thank the driver. Then because you don't have any cash, you go to the app and you tip them, right? You don't have like five bucks. You know, like I'll tip this guy through the app. This continues for years and years. Then you find out through an NBC news story, your money wasn't necessarily going to the driver. It was going to CEO Tony Zhu, who got, by the way, caught with his pants down, right, running around San Francisco doing the scan. DoorDash guarantees $7 payments to drivers. But if you tip, your money goes towards that $7 rather than going on top of the payment. For example, a $4 tip means DoorDash pays $3 and the drivers get a total of $7 rather than $7 plus $4. This means that in the vast majority of cases, your tip 
wouldn't change the driver's pay. Drivers were miserable about this policy and their complaints went unheard until the story broke. DoorDash maintained they were honest about their pay structure with all drivers who they still refused to acknowledge are actual employees. In DoorDash's eyes, they were still giving tips to the drivers. It was just considered part of their $7 guarantee, which is also supposed to cover all gas and maintenance expenses too. The policy was so deceptive to customers. Please, customers, delete. Hashtag delete DoorDash. Delete your, delete your app. Haven't you heard enough? How disgusting is this? And Tony Zhu, you okayed this. You were okay with this. You were the mastermind of this. You got caught with your pants down, dude. Time to set aside. Step aside. Time to resign. Most of us have a basic understanding of tips and giving you a few extra dollars on top of what they pay you. After all, the restaurant doesn't does not pay waitresses their three dollar hourish check just because it was busy night, they still want that money. DoorDash was hit with a lawsuit by DC's Attorney General, Carl Rissin. Glad he exposed them. They immediately adjusted their policy, sort of, to pay their drivers, but the government still sought damages. DoorDash threw their arms up and claimed it was unfair and kicked and screamed for years. Startups are remarkably derivative, derivative of their competitors' practices. Consequently, this lawsuit blew the door open on similar problems in the industry. A driver for Instacart posted this viral screenshot in 2008. Right? This is the amount of time Tom spent on the delivery. This is what Instacart paid him for an hour and nine minutes of work. And here's what Instacart told him when he asked why. My apologies for the delay and confusion here. The reason that your batch incentive was low for this particular order was because of the tip amount. So this is this is a scam that they've been running now. They got caught like Tony with their pants down, confirming the exact same practice at work. Two years later, there is a resolution. DoorDash finally agreed to pay a 2.5 million under the condition that it admitted no wrongdoing. And they got away with murder with two and a half million. They made way more than that. Of that settlement, one and a half million goes to the drivers. $750,000 to the district and $250,000 to two charities. The settlement is only a drop into an ocean-sized problem. For context, Uber spent $250 million lobbying in California alone, all to pass Proposition 22, which insulates companies like Lyft and Grubber from classifying their workers as employees. They won, despite the practical reality that Uber Eats, Lyft and gig workers fail to meet the ABC test of independent contractors. You must meet all three. Waterfalls of lawsuits continue. Grubhub and its competitors still have all sorts of shady conditions that stop tips from going directly to the driver. Uh, forget to tie your shoes before you leave. No tip, a joke as of right now. Consumers, take notice. Tip in cash if you can. Gig companies are always sniffing out drama-free ways to pay employees unfair wages. Don't let cheap things and convenience come at the expense of a little guy. Stay educated and aware. Business owners, give yourself a reasonable, give yourself a reasonableness gut check. Nobody expects us to pay low skill workers seventy-five thousand dollars a year, but there should never be a situation where we are snatching tips from other people's trivialities. If that's what you have to do to survive, it might be time for a new business model. I agreed. Lastly, my own personal experience. Many years back, I worked at a Play It Again sports franchise. They paid me the bare minimum wage. I worked several night shifts each week from 4 to 8. Then it took us 15 to 20 minutes to close down the store. When I got my first paycheck, I noticed they 